Dr. Faith Elliott Rossing, Director of Economic Development and Tourism for Queen Anne's County, and I'm back today uh, with Peter Paris and Sparrow Rogers, and we're going to talk more about the 10K across the bay. It's only 54 days away. Can Thanks you believe that? that? <laughs> 54 days away. It is getting close. Are you excited? Unbelievably there are just so. a multitude of like last minute details that have to be taken care of. Let's go with option B. Okay. And yes. wait, yes. let's go with all yes. of the above. All right. of the above. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. I believe that. I believe that. So um, last time we talked about who was running mm -hmm. and that it sold out 20,000 people and what to expect, you know, from a runner's mm -hmm. perspective and that sort of thing and some of the other events that are going to be going on that weekend. This time, I really want to focus more on kind of the logistics and some Great. of the questions that the members of the public might have about, and this impacts me how, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what happens? Sounds good. So we're going to uh, reiterate that it's Sunday, November 9th, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it's from Anne Arundel County to Queen Anne's County, 20,000 runners. The eastbound span of the Bay Bridge will be closed mm -hmm. so that everyone can run from Anne Arundel County to Queen Anne's County. Right? That's correct. Okay. You can still travel westbound or eastbound on the westbound span. That's right. And just to clarify just a little bit, the eastbound span will res resume normal activities around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So really we're talking yeah. about high, high volumes of congestion in the morning. In the morning. Um, but in the afternoon it should be smooth sailing, uh, just in time for everybody to do their Sunday thing and go to the football games and do all that. All right. So still you can travel at any point in time on the westbound mm -hmm. span because... Traffic both ways uh, will occur on that span, yeah. and the center lane will remain open for whatever might occur. Yes, there'll be contra. The, what the technical term is contra flow of traffic <laughs> on the westbound span, okay. um, both east and west, and the center lane will remain open for emergency vehicles right. and as a buffer just to be safe in general. Right. Very good. Okay, so if people are interested in participating or if they're interested in uh, watching, there's a map behind us, and I don't know if you guys can mm -hmm. look at it or whatever. Sure. If you've got it memorized by heart, mm -hmm. so you uh -huh. can tell us about where participation shuttles are and parking is, both on the western shore and the eastern shore. Mm -hmm. Well, the, as everybody, the race is finishing at the Chesapeake Business Park, mm -hmm. and there's no participant nor spectator parking there, trying to keep that as little little congestion around that site as possible. The spectator parking will be available at Ken Island High School and then a little further on Route 8 at Mattapique Elementary and Middle School. Mm -hmm. Then also at the Thompson Creek Park and Ride. And there'll be a spectator shuttle system in place that can be used to transit back and forth between the parking and the finish line. Okay. And as far as participants go, they can park on the Eastern Shore at Chesapeake College and um, the, Kent Island, the, Kent, the old Kent Narrow Center mm -hmm. there and under the bridge as well. So there'll be shuttle uh, buses going from those two locations to the start and then back from the finish to those two shuttle locations, okay. parking locations. So you can buy online a $10 parking pass? That's correct. Does yeah. that also deal with the shuttle component of it or no? Um, yes, and so that, that's a universal pass to park in any of those lots. Runners have designated parking areas, as you've shown on the map behind us, mm -hmm. and spectators are directed to the other sites. But using that universal parking pass, they can park in any of the they spectator shuttles, mm -hmm. or if they're running, they can park in any of the runner shuttles. Okay. Now, I should say that I believe that pass goes on sale later this week, mm -hmm. um, so that'll be coming up this week at bridgerace.com, where we also have a link to this parking information for people who want to go online and have access to this. Mm -hmm. And you are going to be reaching out to the participants that have obviously already signed yes. up mm -hmm. for... Uh, all the details, you'll yeah. probably be sending them lots of information over the next few weeks. Absolutely, right. yes. Good. Okay. Uh, if somebody's still interested in participating, they can still partner with the charities? Absolutely. Um, as a matter of fact, if people are still interested in running, they should, especially from Queen Anne's County, they should contact Bosom Buddies Charities mm -hmm. and see if they still have room on their team. Okay. Um, and then there are two of our sponsors who still have tickets available as well. Um, and they can get more information about either one of those at, uh, just by emailing info at bridgerace.com. Okay. Um, just to reiterate, though, your charity partners are Bosom Buddies, yep. uh, the Yellow Ribbon Fund, Team mm -hmm. and Training, and the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. That's correct, yeah. That's right. And Team and Training is actually a subset of Leukemia Lymphoma Society, mm -hmm. and it's a special Maryland chapter so that those funds are reinvested here in Maryland. Great. Yeah. And, and th technically, that's the only way you can get an entry at this point. Mm -hmm. Like Sparrow mentioned, we have a few uh, sponsors that have some limited entries for spon uh, promotional reasons. But right. if you went into the race, you got to contact one of our charity partners. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why I that's put right. the logos up on the, right. sc on the screen. Yeah. So I'm sure that uh, the people viewing will be able to check those out uh, as they that's watch right. the show. Great. Okay. 
I'm in cheating. addition, that's okay. <laughs> in addition, there are business promotional opportunities out there for businesses, restaurants yes. in the county. Um, one is that you can showcase your brand, or I think the website says you can simply um, uh, endear your brand That's to the right. public, right? With That's right. Road decals and ads on the bridge? Yeah, right. For the first time ever, we've negotiated rights to put limited placements out on the bridge, mm -hmm. and that includes wonderful graphics going across the bridge. And if I'm, if I'm correct in this, I believe Queen Anne's County is going to have a nice uh, placement out there, welcoming all the runners as they cross over the jurisdictional lines on the bridge, welcoming them to the county. Absolutely. We are really so. excited about being able to see that. I do have yeah. something that I pulled off of your website about how it might look um, Great. in the when it's all decked out, no That's pun right. intended. That's right. right. That's right. Exactly. And all of that is going to happen, though, the morning mm. prior to the race, right? This Setting morning this stuff of. starts early. Starts the That's same right. morning, right. The same morning, right. That's right. And then in addition to those decals, as you mentioned, those are branding opportunities. But we do have specific digital marketing and other, other marketing activities specially priced for Queen Anne's County businesses. Mm -hmm. And um, that includes everything from just getting an offer out to all of our participants or if they want to do sampling on site or try to sell things on site at the expo and finisher party, they should absolutely sign up to do and so. And we'll be sending out more information about that through an email blast through the chamber and through the Economic Development Commission okay. and the Kent Harris Great. Development Foundation. So we're really going to start promoting opportunities where Queen Anne's County businesses can participate at a discount. Great. Well, we'd love to have them. It's a Queen Anne's County party. I so. know. It's Queen Anne's County. <laughs> uh, there's also, right. as you mentioned before, a virtual goodie bag. That's right. Right. That's right, and I guess what most people would consider a virtual goodie bag is when you get that offer, especially in your email, mm -hmm. that says um, this brand is offering you this opportunity in conjunction with your participation, and we get incredibly high open rates on those, and they're very affordable to do for businesses. They, they need a specific call to action, so those are more of a, a way to really sell a product or a service, right. less about branding, more about engagement. Right. Yep. So that opportunity will exist also. I think the next slide is, here we go. Uh, uh, yeah. This came off of the website. This is essentially what the placement <laughs> of the barrier wall yeah. ads might look like or the road ads, the yeah. banners. That's exciting. This has never been done before. Mm -hmm. right? It's exciting. It's complicated. And mm -hmm. uh, we wish we could give it, to, give it at no cost to everybody, but we do bear the burden of all this, the financial exactly. burden. And it's just wonderful that we have the opportunity to do some historical advertising. But the reality of it is, what are the marketing imprints that are available from something like this? I mean, there'll be photographs from oh, every yeah. angle. Uh, right? We have what a number of... What are you the marketing impressions to be? We've estimated that we'll get about 56 million media impressions on race weekend. We have every major um, regional you know, media outlet that is planning on having a presence at the event. I know that um, CBS from Baltimore is planning on having one of their reporters run the event and with her, her camera crew is going to be out there. So you can expect high visibility, but also just historic pictures of your brand on one of the most iconic structures around. That's very cool. Okay, so Queen Anne's County is the host county for the 10K across the bay. Queen Anne's County is a great place to live, work, and play, and we really appreciate Peter and Sparrow being here with yeah. us today. And the race is only 54 days away, but we'll be sure to see you multiple times before then to get back in front of the Queen Anne's County public and the other public so that they can understand more about how the race might impact them yeah. and what their opportunities are to participate, either from... Uh, a business perspective or uh, a runner perspective. So thank you so much for coming. And I think Sparrow has one more thing she wants to add. I do. Thank you, Faith. I just wanted to make sure that, particularly for Queen Anne's County residents, make sure you go to bridgerace.com and click on our store. You can actually purchase um, raffle tickets to win custom-designed Paul Reed Smith guitars right there, and those benefits go 100% to the par participating charities. And those Paul Reed Smith guitars yeah. come in colors that That's are coordinated right. with the charities. That's Yellow right. Yellow for That's right. the Yellow Ribbon, blue for the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, pink for Bosom Buddies, and purple. Yes, mm -hmm. for team and training. For team and training. That's right. So She's hired. She's got this. <laughs> <laughs> Only 18 months, huh? <laughs> Only 18 months. Well, thanks for joining us again today, and we hope you've enjoyed this segment. Stay <laughs> tuned. There, again, will probably be a town hall meeting at the Ken Island Great. Volunteer Fire Department sometime in October for any of the county residents that may have questions about how this might impact them. And we look forward to seeing you there. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us at 410-604-2100. Thank you.